spent uh, the majority of my working life working for the NHS in mental health, uh, nearly 30 years at St Nick's in Gosforth and St George's in, uh, in Morpeth. And uh, I spent a lot of that time working in rehabilitation, drug and alcohol abuse, uh, and working with adolescents that had come to us referred from um, like secure services or the prison services. Um, and for me and my wife, who've lived in Blythe all my life, and uh, the family's been here generations, we, we'd seen the area go downhill. The reason I got into it was because we, we would often go out uh, and and see that you know the place was starting to get run down there wasn't a lot of um chance for 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 youngsters to develop to see their potential to um to, to get employment we saw the town center going down downhill um and it was at that point um with an interest in politics but no real political experience that i said look you know somebody's got to do something about this. Uh, and my wife told us to shut up or do something about it. Hmm. So at that point, uh, I wrote to David Cameron, said, look, you know, uh, if, if you're looking for someone to stand, I'll stand. This is why I want to stand. Um, and I started a, a branch for the Conservatives in Blythe. Uh, it, it's kind of become a family thing, really, because, uh, you know, my wife got involved and, and what my daughter got involved and all their friends started getting involved, putting leaflets out for it and, and just getting the word out as to, you know, we're living in a great area. We, we, we've got so much potential um, that's just untapped. And I, I want to be that link to, um, to, to take it from sort of uh, the constituency to Westminster and whatever the message is from Westminster to return that to the constituency and just do everything I can to support people in that area. And so I've been working for Crampton Voluntaries Project since 2006. Um, so over the years, we've seen like lots of changes. We've worked with different groups of young people, including those with disabilities, young carers, and we do work with young offenders as well. So what we try and do is provide activities to divert them away from criminal behaviours, um, antisocial behaviours, build new friendships and be with like good role models um, and we've done that in like lots of different ways and um, the first time I met Ian was during lockdown again like every everybody was locked down and um, we just thought well youth and community we need to support the community so we began like coordinating the relief um, so we're matching young people, uh, matching people up in the community with volunteers. We um, we started with food parcels and we became like the main hub in Cramlington. And that's where Ian came along. He was uh, sourcing food for it and bringing it. He was delivering it, and um, the food parcels were putting up, and um, they were taking the parcels out to people as well because it got really, really busy. And um, so everybody just mucked in together, which was really good. Um, it, it worked really well. So we went out into the community, which normally we were like centre-based activities. So we went out into the community, so went on to estates where the young people live and we started working with them. And we provided loads of different activities. So every week they were expecting to meet when things like that. <clears throat> we couldn't advertise it because it was COVID and we didn't want to attract crowds, but um, it was really well attended. Um, it gave something for the young people to do, but it was also about like, they could talk about their anxieties and stresses and things like that, things that were going on at home and um, how they were coping. And they were looking at us as just like a release. Yeah, but I think what, what, what we're all getting at really is two things here. It's about unlocking the potential that people have. Mm -hmm. And we can see that as adults, the potential that these youngsters have, these yeah. young adults have, and we need to unlock that potential in a positive way yeah. and catch it before it can go off the rails and then start, you know, smashing windows or breaking bus shelters or breaking into cars and, and then start going down the line in a positive way. And it, it gives them confidence. And with confidence comes the ability to apply for jobs, to build relationships, to uh, have a have a steady home life, 
it, the whole thing, it lifts your, your aspirations completely. Yeah, you're right, Ian. We, we, we have children who are looking after their, their parents because, you know, at times you're trying to, you're tempted to intervene and say, well, we'll, do, we'll change the parents. It's, it's probably too late. But it's never, it's never too late to change a child or yeah. a young adult. It, it, it can happen very quickly. Yeah. It can happen like that. It's strange the, the change can, because obviously they're changing. It's a, it's a really funny time for our bodies. It's, I mean, I'm talking here as if I know about it. I only know about it because I was once a teenager, Claire, but you, <laughs> you're, you're, you're dealing with these people every day and, you know, full marks to you for. What, what, it out. What's the core age you deal with, Claire? You, you mentioned when you deal with disabled youth, it's about 11 or 25, but uh, other, other youth, what type of age is it? So our constitution, um, we can work with young people from eight right. Up, right. up to 25 with disabilities or 19. Um, but when we're out in the community, we we'll have families coming together. So you might have like a teenager coming with a younger sibling who's younger than eight. So it's just about accommodating when we're out on the on the estates is accommodating to meet all of their needs because we're not going to turn anybody away. And like um, we would try and include everybody. But in the centre, it's like eight plus um, the centre and Cramlet has been going like for 30 years now. Whereas Kiel does only two years, um, but it took a lot of fundraising to get there. But um, one of our workers, when you're talking about criminal behaviour, she was um, excluded from school. She had dyslexia and it was undiagnosed. And um, she went, she was doing like low level stuff and getting into trouble. And then um, she came to CVYP and then she started um, doing a Duke Vember Award. So she's done bronze, silver, gold, and then she did the diamond award. And then now she's a mountain leader. She did outdoor education and she's one of the coordinators at the project. And I'm, she doesn't mind sharing her story because um, she shared it herself. But it's like showing young people that um, with the right kind of support, you can do anything as long as you are in the right mindset. So it's about inspiring these young people and motivating them to change, like even a small change. Mm -hmm.